how long somebody's gonna live. And the, you know, extension of life, I, I think we can come out of this ahead. Uh, finally, on our docket, London Bree calls for better policing in San Francisco after this insane surge in crime. Here's the video. And it's time that the reign of criminals who are destroying our city, it is time for it to come to an end. And it comes to an end when we take the steps to be more aggressive with law enforcement, more aggressive with the changes in our policies, and less tolerant of all the bullshit that has destroyed our city. We are gonna turn this around. This is a city that has a population of less than one million people with an over $12 billion budget. The residents of this city have been extremely generous in providing us with the resources we need to make a difference. And now the priorities we need to make must be to protect them, must be to turn things around in their neighborhoods. When you are in a room full of people, I would say probably anywhere between 90 and 95 percent of folks could raise their hand and say that either their car has been broken into, broken into, or they've been a victim in some capacity or another. That is not okay. That is not acceptable. Sachs, I thought crime was down and that everything was great <laughs> and that we were going to defund the police. What is happening here? What, what's the big turnaround? Well, it's, it's exactly what I was saying that, well, first of all, I loved it. I love what she said. It's yeah. exactly what I've been saying for the last year. And it's really great to hear her say the same types of things. I started this this campaign back in January after yep. New Year's Eve. You had those two women uh, get killed by a Murdered. repeat offender who was re released by Chase Boudin. And then as I dug into it, I saw that he was doing this all the time as part of his agenda of decarceration. So, and, you know, a year later, it, l like we've talked about throughout this, this whole time, I mean, the city has totally degenerated into some sort of dystopian Gotham-like city. Uh, this did feel like the beginning of a Batman movie. I mean, yeah. it was a strong statement. I thought it was great. This is just the beginning of what needs to be done. I predict that London Breed is going to eventually butt heads with Chase Boudin. There is no way that he will support this agenda of fixing the city. She wants to inc increase the police presence. So like you said, she is going to refund the police, not defund the police. Chase Boudin is, I mean, the only people he's passionate about prosecuting our police officers. Yeah. So we have a huge problem that the police department is actually, we have too few of them. We're understaffed. We would take that job. It's not just because of the budget. It's also because they're demoralized and yeah. they've got, you know, they've got this prosecutor. By the way, there was a case just recently where um, a repeat offender bashed a vodka ball over the head of a cop and the chase had just announced that he's getting sent to mental health diversion instead of being prosecuted. I want to what you post can attack this. Yeah. a cop and not go to jail in the city of San Francisco. Yes, yes. This is why the cops are demoralized. So, in order for London Bree to fix the problem, she is going, and I think she's Chess on the right track go. here. He's got to go. So, here's my prediction: on February fifteenth, they are having the recall election for the education board. And I predict that that board, at least two of the three are going to be recalled. The parents are sick and, ti are sick and tired of it. Yeah. They are going to be out. I think that's going to embolden London Bree to then support the recall of Chase Boudin in the June wow. election. And, and I think between- And she gets that, to pick his replacement when it's recalled. Yes, exactly. So, so I, th that's what she's doing. She basically flipped. She was quiet up until this point. Uh, and the now progressive she left are slowly eating themselves. Yeah, I mean, I think this is self-preservation, right, Shamath? I mean, if she didn't make a change here, she's going to be out of office too. She'll get recalled. It's not self-preservation. They're realizing that these policies don't work. Mm. Moral absolutism didn't work on the left or the right. These guys have tried in a small scale to do what a certain fraction of the Democratic Party has been trying to do at a national level. It doesn't work. Overspending, under-policing, under-educating – it doesn't do anything. There, I think there is going to be a schism. I think it started after uh, the Youngkin victory in Virginia, and I think it's going to accelerate throughout for the next year, and especially after the red wave in November 2022. There's going to be a schism between liberal pragmatists and these extreme radical progressives. I think um, London Breed represents, she's obviously very liberal, but I think she's pragmatic. I think she wants to find solutions that work. Whereas Chase Boudin is a radical ideologue who will never change no, much, no matter how much evidence is presented to him that his policies don't work and are backfiring. I think um, 
There's a simple formula. The person who gets you into the mess is likely not the right person to get you out of the mess. And um, well said. You know, she she talks about San Francisco having a twelve billion dollar year budget. Can you guys imagine if she was the CEO of a tech company that had twelve billion dollars a year in opex, and she ran the business into the ground? Would the board say, "Go ahead, turn it around"? Absolutely not. The board would step in, and in this case, the board is the citizens of San Francisco, and they would say, let's find the right person to turn this thing around. And while she stood up and said the right things, and, and may, maybe it would echo, and I think, you know, even if it echoes within S David Sachs's heart, I'm sure it's echoing in a lot of hearts of more liberal San Franciscans. Um, but I think that the apathy, being asleep at the wheel, and allowing the um, disorganization across the departments within that city is ultimately her responsibility. And I don't think that any amount of, you know, verbiage or action she might take at this point justifies the damage she has caused while being the leader of that city. And There's I think that you'll, and, and by the way, I think you'll see to Sachs's point earlier, I think you'll see the same response across the nation where folks feel like the, the leaders that got them into the mess that they're in locally, in cities and, and elsewhere around this country, are going to vote those folks out of office um, because they want to change. And it's the same reason we saw folks vote Trump into office and the same reason we saw folks vote Trump out of office. The more you want to see a change, the more you're going to make a change with your Confidence, political electorate. so right. Friedberg is so, so right. There is a phenomenal Twitter account. His name is Rob Henderson. And he's like a PhD student right now. I think he's in Europe on scholarship. You know, he's this, this, this kid, this guy has, a, has an incredible background, which you can talk about later. But Rob Henderson has this thing, which I love, which is that, you know, a lot of this stuff is born out of what he calls luxury beliefs, right? Like defunding totally. the police is a luxury totally. belief. If you're like this rich middle class cloistered person that can sit behind a gate, have armed security, yada, 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 because you're not living in the ghetto where the byproducts of the byproduct of defunding the police are borne out or decarceration are borne out. Or, you know, if you send your kid to a private school, you can completely be for all these crazy radical ideas like defunding, you know, advanced placement, defunding the gifted program, because if your kid's smart, you'll just pay for a tutor and you can do whatever you want. Those luxury beliefs exist more in the progressive left in such a small cohort of people than in any other political class that we have in America. And when they get a hold of power, they've now had the right to show whether those luxury beliefs can actually work. The data says it doesn't. Okay. Let's go with competence. I mean, how about that? Like, just keep people safe and make the education These system. These luxury better. beliefs belong in sociolo sociology textbooks, in yeah. anthropological articles. They, they, they're, they're better off in like where beatniks smoke pot and talk about it over a glass of wine. Let me clean up something. Just, so look, I have no special desire to defend London Breed. I'm sure there are many. <laughs> I, knew uh, I, knew, I knew that I, hit a nerve. No, look, I me, nerve. I'm sure there are many better <laughs> Sachs, people. Are you, you guys, wearing a London mayor. Breed brand sweater? Is that, yeah. is that Tom London Ford. Breed? Tom Ford. <laughs> Tom Ford. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Tom Ford, Tom Ford. Tom Ford, Tom Ford. Look, I, I'm sure there are better mayors, but... Um, d just to, I, I think I think we have to sort of temper what you said based on the realities of politics in San Francisco, which are which are this: we actually have a weak mayor. The mayor can't do anything yeah. without a vote, right? without the vote of the right. board of supervisors, right. and the soups are controlled right now by a bunch of crazies Wackos, who are basically Dean allies: Preston. Dean Preston and Matt Haney, Matt Haney and Hillary and Rodin, who are who are allies of Chase Boudin. Okay, so London Breed, I think, wants to do some good things. I think that she is more pragmatic than these ideologues. I think that she could have been more aggressive and more outspoken about standing up to them. However, earlier, yeah. earlier okay, but I think she is now doing the right thing in terms of the speech she just gave, basically mm. calling for refunding the police, and we're sick of the bullshit, and we're going to take action. Those are the right things to be saying right now. She did the right thing in terms of supporting the recall of this school board, and what I'm saying is, let's give her a chance to see if yeah, she does come agreed. out 100%, in favor 100%. of the recall of Chase Boudin, because I think that's where it's headed. And if she gets on board with that, and she shows she's pragmatic, she may actually survive well, you say, this well, you red wave that's coming. Will you do a fundraiser if she gets out It's of happening all around the country, right? We saw Bill de Blasio, who was the first real progressive leftist elected Dummy. to a major city. Incompetent. He completely ran New York City into the ground. Now Incompetent. Eric Adams is going to go clean it up, right? 
We had Glenn Youngkin, who basically ran a centrist campaign, take over Virginia. It's over. It's Just, over, Johnny. Let's call it. It's over. Game centrism, over. pragmatism. Enough of these extreme polar opposites, okay? Right. Let, let Antifa and the Proud Boys go and make love to each other in some <laughs> deserted island. It's over. It's done. Let's uh, stop talking about it. That's the funniest thing I heard. Somebody said to me, like, Proud Boys and um, what's the other group? Oath Keepers or something? They, they, this uh, woman who's gay said, <laughs> she's like, oh, you know, it was Rachel Maddow. She's like, I think these are like gay activist groups, aren't they? Like, Proud Boys? It sounds like a gay activist group. <laughs> I think we're seeing the the correction of the overreaction, the pandemic caused what, what Neil Ferguson calls pandemic politics, that we that the pandemic bred a strain of radical politics that we saw all over the country. And I think on both that, sides, uh, um, and I think the country is going to come out of that. Did you see these idiots go to Cheesecake Factory and do a sit in without their masks on? Uh, and that that's their form of protest is like, we're going to go into the Cheesecake Factory. Who are you talking about? It was a Cheesecake Factory protest. Uh, and now it's going national with people who are anti-mask, anti-vax. They don't want to have to show their cards or wear a mask when they walk to their seat. So they're literally doing sit-ins at Cheesecake Factory. And I was like, I would protest going to a Cheesecake Factory. I, I'm not going to protest in a Cheesecake Factory. It's well, some people aren't on a diet like you, Jake, and they enjoy cheesecake. Ah, well, where are you at? What's the number? <laughs> Sachs, just give us the number. What's your I'm weight like today? I'm around 170. I'm 174. So I'm right. I'm, right, know, I'm coming you're, right you're, up behind you. You hear the steps? You hear the steps? Right Saxy, I'm going to tell you, bro, I love your sweater. I'm going to drive to the city, come to the mausoleum and make love to you with that sweater on. Oh, my God. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week on the love All you, boys. In Podcast. Love you, besties. Love, love you, Sax. Love you, Sax. Back at you. We'll let your winners ride. Rain Man David Sax. source it to the fans and they've just gone crazy with it. Love you, West Ice Queen of Kinoa. Where did you get merch? Are I'm back. going all in.